what is up everybody it is nexus complex and thank you for joining me for game three of season two of the reasonable pokemon league we are off to a great start 2-0 is way better than i imagined honestly if you had to ask me i would have i would have guessed 0-2 um, so yeah, I'll definitely take 2-0 at this point and going into the third game of the season. It's becoming a 2-0 against the Toronto Talon Flames, against Blue Fire, another returning coach from last season, and if memory serves correctly, the coach who knocked me out of the playoffs last year. There's no hard feelings, no, no underlying tension, slowly bubbling to the surface, none whatsoever. And I'm actually appalled that you would think that there is. Anyways. All history aside. These are new teams. New strategies. And it's all different. So. Basically everything that happened last year. None of it matters. None of it matters. So getting into his team. His first overall pick was Clefable. Clefable is bulky and can be very hard to get rid of. It's got lots of recovery. It's got access to soft-boiled, wish. It can hit you fairly well with Moonblast. And it's got a decent kind of move pool. A lot of the Gen 1 normal Pokemon have that like expansive move pool. So Clefable benefits from that. It's obviously fairy, so it benefits from that. Like I've said before, I truly believe that fairy is probably the best type in the meta. So Clefable is good. It can attack you, but generally it's going to want to kind of stall you out. Oh, and I completely forgot to mention that it has toxic and stealth rocks. It can calm mind and it can cosmic power. There's a lot of things Clefable could do. There's a lot of sets that I've seen with it. So you're never quite sure what's going to come at you. The next Pokemon that we're going to talk about is Rotom Mo, who at the beginning of the meta wasn't really getting that much usage. It was a lot of Rotom Heat and Rotom Wash. And then some people started looking at what Rotom Mo could do and they were like, hey, this Rotom is also pretty good. Let's bring that to the table. So Rotom's usage, Rotom Mo's usage has stepped up a little bit in the last month or so based on what I've been seeing from like Picolytics and things like that. And honestly, I think Rotom Mo, even though this has no bearing on how you use it, I think it looks super cool. I think it's the coolest looking of the Rotom forms. So I mean, that alone makes it A tier. So Rotom Mo can do trick which can really mess the team up and can cripple Pokemon with the right right set. Uh, earlier in the season, you saw that um, I was tricked. I think it was in the game against Lemon Boy. Gave my Corviknight choice specs. And uh, yeah, GG Corviknight. That's it. That Corviknight was not set up to operate with choice specs. It can do that. It gets Ally Switch. Which you could say Ally Switch is kind of broken you could argue that ally switch is a little over overpowered the the biggest benefit that ally switch gives you is mind games so generally you'll pull it out the first time wait why am i talking about ally switch and doubles it's singles it's a single season what are you doing next why are you just breaking these things down all the way so yeah ally switch and singles use it please blue fire use ally switch and singles um, Leaf Storm, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, predominantly the attacks that it uses. It also can do Hex, and I think all the Rotoms get Shadow Ball because it can learn it from its original form. And it's got good special attack. So Rotom Mo, especially when you have a Pokemon like Seismitoad and Barbarical on your team, poses a pretty big threat. Pelipper. Is the third Pokemon we're going to talk about, and Pelipper has the ability Drizzle. And looking at this team, Bluefire drafted a good water team 
but he has enough other pieces that he doesn't have to be a water team. So I'm going to tell you right now, I'm kind of expecting water. Because when you have Pelipper, Barrascuta, and Toxicroak on the same team with Rotom Mo, Clefable, and Bronzong, like that right there is a pretty good rain team. You got enough little coverage there. But yeah, Pelipper's going to set up Drizzle. Gets Hurricane, which Hurricane becomes 100% active, or 100% uh, accurate in her in in the rain. So Hurricane can just hit you like a freaking freight train with 110 base power, 100% accuracy, and it confuses you. Yeah, Hurricane's pretty good. Pelipper's got enough speed to where he can get a Hurricane off against most Pokemon. Obviously, access to Hydro Pump, Scald. Those are usually the main attacks that he uses because most people like to have a a slot open for Roost so it can try to heal itself. And I've seen Protect on it a good amount. It depends on what you're trying to do with your Pelipper. Some people want it to be bulky and keep it alive so it can keep setting rain. Others just want it to get the rain up and then they're going to try to sweep you out. And if it gets taken down, well then they'll set it again with something else. So Pelipper is a pretty large threat. I don't really have anything outright that can really handle it easily. Like I have things that can take it down, but I don't have like, you know, that electric type that can just annihilate it in the right circumstance. So we'll, we'll see. We'll have to play around that. And then a Pokemon that I was looking at hard at certain points in the draft, I just never pulled the trigger on it because I took Hydreigon earlier in the draft, is Haxorus. I like Haxorus so, so much. Haxorus is one of my favorite Pokemon. It's got sky high attack. It's got good enough speed. Its defense and everything is lackluster, but it's supposed to sweep and kill. It's got access to a great amount of moves in Gen 8. Uh, it got access to First Impression. I think they gave it close combat this generation. It obviously has Outrage and Dragon Claw and just it has a it has a bunch of different type coverage moves that it can use and it's fast enough in this meta that it can always be a threat. So you got to you got to play it safe when you're going against a Haxorus and not give it that chance to set up a D dance or a Swords dance and then just start sweeping the rest of your team because if it gets one good boost that could be GG easily. Speaking of someone that's changed the Gen 8 meta and turned it on its head was the inclusion of Incineroar. Incineroar. So Incineroar came back and it was it was pretty popular in Gen 7. It came back and it didn't really miss a beat in Gen 8. Um, obviously Intimidate is a really good ability. Um, I feel like more Pokemon have Defiant and Clear Body, but it's still really useful, especially when you're doing like league battles like this and only a few Pokemon have access to it. But he also has Parting Shot. I think he has access to Knock Off. I'm not sure. I believe he does though. I just, I don't really care so much. I just don't remember if, um, if knockoff was pre-home because I don't think he can learn it in Sword and Shield. I don't think he can because I tried to run one with knockoff and I don't think I can learn it. So he might have knockoff, he might not. We'll have to watch out for that. But if he doesn't, he still has Darkest Lariat and Crunch and a bunch of other good dark type moves. It's kind of slow, but uh, he's not really meant to be a fast sweeping Pokemon. He can burn you with a little wisp. You throw a salt vest on him, he's going to take a bunch of special attacks. So, yeah, Incineroar is one of those Pokemon that if you take it lightly, it could beat your whole team. And with a Pokemon on its team like Clefable that has Wish, its longevity could be extended. So, you're probably going to want to like Toxic or Stealth Rocks and hope that maybe it doesn't have heavy duty boots or something like that to. Uh, mitigate that damage on the switch-ins. 
Now we're going to look at Bronzong. Steel Psychic type. Pretty good typing. Um, it's it's really good ability heat proof, which reduces the fire damage, and since it's a weakness of its, that is actually super beneficial. I would anticipate against my team and having Salazzle that it would run heat proof. So I'm just gonna kind of work under that assumption for the most part if it comes. Uh, if not, well then you know, no harm, no foul. But uh, that's, that's also why I wanted Salazzle for Pokemon like Bronzong, because I can use Toxic and not have to worry about anything switching in to take it. Bronzong also has the ability to self-sacrifice itself, because it's one of the Pokemon that gets Explosion. And I myself in the past have ran a Bronzong and a Claydol, who's also on this team, with a normal gem for the sole purpose of setting rocks against a team that had no hazard clear and then blowing up in the face of its its setup Pokemon. So I'm, I'm going to be a little nervous playing against uh, Bronzong and Claydol, who we'll get into a little bit later. But obviously Bronzong's got good defense. You can throw a fighting type out against it. You'll probably outspeed, but I don't know if you'll necessarily kill it. And it's got enough special attack that it can kill you with a Psychic or a Psy Shock or anything of that nature. It's... It's bulky, but it's not its not a Pokemon that doesn't have any offensive capabilities. Now we're going to get into Barrascuda, which to me is like the definitive glass cannon Pokemon from Gen 8. Barrascuda has got ridiculous speed and ridiculous attack. It gets Swift Swim, so it doubles that ridiculous speed in the rain, which, oh yeah, he has Pelipper, so... Yeah, good luck with that. And it just hits like a Mack truck. You tap it, it'll probably die. But yeah, Barrascuda. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't have much experience against Barrascuda because every time I've played against it, it's been a rain team and it's been Swift Swim and they've just been clicking like liquidation or something. And I'll just kind of just blow it away with a Thunderbolt or something. I'll be able to get in on it and take it down. So that's kind of my experience with Barrascuda. Toxicroak is the next Pokemon on the team. I really like Toxicroak. I uh, had it on a team that I was running on Showdown for a while. And I gave it dry skin. It was like when Gen 8 first came out. So everyone was running Dracofish with Ficious Rend. And it's a low-key, awesome switch-in against the Water-type move. And Toxicroak is fast enough to do damage. Poison Fighting is a pretty good, you know, you're four times weak to Psychic. You know, so you got to play around that. But there's a lot of good Pokemon that are four times weak to things. Just don't let it get hit with a Psychic move. It's fast enough to deal with most of the fairies in the game, and it's got stab, poison, jab, so fairies don't really want to mess with it. It's got sucker punch, which makes it super difficult to get rid of in certain situations. And obviously close combat, and I believe it gets drain punch. Like, I think I, think I was running assault vest, toxic croak, with dry skin, drain punch, sucker punch, poison jab and then like close combat or something and I was actually like it was pretty effective people weren't expecting it against Dracofish I couldn't really do much against Dracofish but once you get that water absorb Dracofish usually doesn't want to stay in because most people are using like scarf or band or something to try to get the fishish rend off so yeah I like Toxicroak a lot Toxicroak is something that uh, I'll be looking out for it can be it can be a Pokemon that changes the tide of the whole game Next up is Frostlass. Frostlass generally functions best as a lead. It can set spikes. It's ghost type, so you can't rapid spin the spikes away. It's got good enough special attack that it's not just going to sit out there and you can set up on it. With Shadow Ball, Blizzard, Ice Beam, things like that. It's got good enough offensive type coverage that not many Pokemon are going to just want to sit out there on it. Um, that being said, it's frail, so 
I feel like 90% of the time I see a frost lass, it's got focus sash, and its main its main duty is to just set spikes and either get out or try to hit something hard before it dies. So we'll see with frost lass. He might have something that I'm not thinking about, a way to use frost lass, but generally from what I've seen playing people, the common set is lead spikes. Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, sometimes Destiny Bond. They'll try to get you with the Destiny Bond. So, that's Frost Lass. And last but not least, we have Claydol. Ground Psychic, faster than you would expect. I think it, I think it clocks in around like 60 or 70 base speed. I'd have to double check that. I'm not going to do it now because I'm lazy, essentially. But uh, it gets Earthquake, it gets uh, Zen Headbutt, it gets Stealth Rocks, it gets Explosion. It can hit something extremely hard. And I, I believe, like I said, I'm not checking this stuff, I'm just talking out of my ass. I think it can learn Grass Knot. I think that's a thing. So I'll definitely have to watch that. If he brings Clay Doll, I probably don't want to go to Seismitoad because it'll do Grass Knot. I'll have to check. I'm going to check before the battle. I'm pretty sure it does. I'll let you guys know when I record the uh, battle video. I'll let you know if Clay Doll learns Grass Knot or not. <laughs> grass Knot or not. <laughs> Hilarious. Alright guys, that's the team breakdown. The Toronto Talon Flames are 1-1. One one. They're a good team. Blue Fire is a good coach can make really good adjustments and I would expect a rain team but that's not necessarily what's going to happen so the six Pokemon I'm going to probably prep for will be Pelipper, Rotomo, Clefable, Haxorus, Barrascuta, Ugh, does he bring Toxicroak or Bronzong? What would be better against my team? Maybe Toxicroak, because Toxicroak can deal with Hydreigon. Toxicroak can deal with a lot of my Pokemon. Although, if he's running Rain, I don't know if Toxicroak will bring Fire Punch. But yeah, so I would go Clefable, Mo, Pelipper, Haxorus, Barrascuta, and Toxicroak. But Toxicroak could very easily be switched out for Incineroar or Bronzong. But I'm going to prep for Toxicroak, I think. So those are the six I'm expecting going in here. Hopefully I get it right, and hopefully we keep our momentum going. But I will talk to you guys again in the battle. I will see you then. Alright, I'm back, and it is time to break down this battle. Oh, and by the way, I told you guys. I would tell you. Claydol does get Grass Knot, so that's a thing I'm going to have to look out for. Anyways, looking at the team that he brings... Toronto Talent Fames, they bring Clefable, Rotom Mo, Bronzong, and Haxorus. So I got four of the six right, but it does not look like he's running rain. So, start of the battle, I go Salazzle because of Fake Out. It goes Claydol. I'm going to fake it out. He switches out immediately to get Intimidate off. So I'm going to fake out and send a roar. It eats it up, it laughs at that. Hits me with knockoff. Does a ton of damage and takes away my black sludge. So Salazzle's staying power is not nearly as much as it used to be. I'm going to Dragon Tail him out. Now I get to bring out Delmice. Who I haven't got to use yet. He immediately switched it back into a center roar, which is a terrible match over Delmice. Goodbye. Knockoff hits Seismitoad incredibly hard. I lose my Rindo Berry. So that was my kind of like worst case scenario thing for Rotom Mo. He taunts me, which was fine. I was already going EQ anyways, and I outsped, which we were both kind of surprised about. I didn't really throw any, like, excessive speed boost onto Seismitoad. I think he's just naturally faster than Cinderoar. Switch into Rotom Mo. Obviously going to switch out. Throws up a sub. Nah, I'm not going to let that happen. So we're just going to flamethrower to get rid of the sub. I don't want it to nasty plot and just try to sweep everything. 
Thunderbolt's going to kill me, but that's fine. Salazzle was kind of crippled after the, losing the Black Sludge anyways. Get Gardevoir out here. Gardevoir knows Mystical Fire. See if we can chase it away. We do. Clefable comes out. Clefable is not a bad Pokemon to hit with Mystical Fire. I was surprised. Most Clefables I run into use lefties. There's no lefties. So I'm wondering what's going on. It starts Calm Mind Boosting. There's no point in me staying out here and playing this game. It can heal. We're going to go Delmice. See if he gets cocky. Just go for an Anchor Shot. See if we can kill it. Switch to Incineroar, which is an easy switch. Toxic Damage is going to take it down to about 10% after the Anchor Shot. We're not staying in to get Flare Blitz by this thing. We'll let Seismitoad take this hit. He already lost his item anyway, so knockoff is fine. Toxic Damage takes care of Incineroar. Here comes Haxorus. Awesome nickname, by the way. First impression. Really good move for Haxorus to get. Takes down Seismitoad. So it's 5 on 4. We're going to go Gardevoir. Scare the Haxorus out. Bronzong comes in. Kind of expected. Moonblast only does 16%. Resisted. It's got lefties. So this is a bulky Bronzong. We're going to go Corviknight. Really just because I have nothing else to do with it right now. Sets up rocks. Comes into Rotom Mo. I was going to substitute and set up on this Bronzong, so I already got my sub up. I'm expecting a Thunderbolt, but he goes substitute here. So I already clicked Brave Bird to see if he got cocky and did something like that. So I called it right. I think he's also expecting me to set up. So he's trying to also set up because his Nasty Pot would kill me, whereas my Brave Bird might not. But I'm not letting him set up. I'm just kind of being like aggressive right now in this position I'm in a good spot I'm not losing much from the brave birds and I don't think a thunderbolt is going to kill me outright so now I've got Rotom down to 15% it's got lefties it's trying to heal up I've also got lefties I'm going to get out just because I don't want to lose Corviknight to something dumb I'd rather have someone else take this thunderbolt Gardevoir takes it pretty well Gonna try to Mystical Fire. I'm pretty sure he knows or is expecting Mystical Fire. But he still puts Bronzong in there. I'm pretty sure it's Heat Proof. Um, but I'm not sure because it doesn't say anything on the battle if it does. We're going to Delmice here because I have Shadow Claw. And I was expecting a Steel type move. Body Press was best case scenario because I'm immune to it. I'm gonna get rid of the hazards. Set some speed up. He's going to Toxic me. So this is kind of like a... Looks like a stully, bulky Bronzong. I'm going to Anchor Shot because I have Shadow Claw. I don't want to switch out. I'd rather just take care of this thing right now because I think it's its Hazard Setter. So now I'm ready. I'm going to Shadow Claw. Probably kill this thing. And I do. I get the, uh, I get the kill, so that's nice. I don't want to lose Delmice yet, just because I think Claydol could still have rocks. So we're going to switch out. He comes in Haxor. So I'm going to go Corviknight, because I'm expecting first impression. I take it really well. I'm thinking that it's either Scarf or Banded. So he switches out back into Rotom. I was going to Roost up, because I wasn't sure if it was Banded or not, but I just wanted to play it safe. I didn't think I was going to die from anything it had. Gonna sub again, but I was just trying to go for the kill. So now he's at a point where he can't really sub because he doesn't have enough HP. So I pretty much got this thing in a bad spot. I take the Thunderbolt, 43%. I am super happy with that. I get rid of this. That's the biggest threat to Corviknight now off, off the field. So Corviknight is now in a very strong position for the rest of this battle. Out comes Cafable. 38% damage on the Clefable. I was really ready to just kill Clefable and sag off Corviknight and see what happened. Clefable recovered. And now I'm thinking that this Clefable doesn't have Mystical Fire. Because I was expecting a Mystical Fire. So at Calm Minds, I'm a little worried now. I'm going to Roost just in case. 
This Thunderbolt does not break my sub, which means I don't think this Clefable has any special attack investment. So now, I've got the go-ahead to basically bulk up, because I don't think this Clefable can deal with Corvi. I didn't have a, a Steel-type move on Corviknight, but I had Brave Bird, and I didn't think Clefable was going to live a plus two Brave Bird. So, now that I'm just, now that I just destroy Clefable with Brave Bird, it's down to Claydol and Haxorus, I'm really just worried about, I mean, I'm still worried about Haxorus because it's Haxorus, but Claydol is a rock type, so I was a little worried about that. It rapid spins, which I was confused about. So now it's faster, but I'm just going to set my sub up just to see what it's going to do. It uses Grass Knot which I was completely surprised about which says to me that Claydol probably was not ever thought of to deal with Corviknight so now I'm just gonna boost because I know it's gonna resist the Brave Bird I just wanna kill it this was a very very hit or miss set it wound up hitting it was Roost Bulk Up Substitute and Brave Bird. So thankfully he brought a team that really didn't resist Brave Bird. So now the plus three, the plus three in the attack, the defense, sub up. Haxorus isn't going to be able to deal with Corviknight here. So Brave Bird is going to finish Haxorus off. So we pick up our third win of the season against the Talon Flames. Really good game to Blue Fire. 4-0. Makes it seem like it was an easy win, but it was not that by any stretch of the imagination. At any point in the battle, it could have gone either way. I could easily be talking about my first loss of the season in this game. Um, so yeah, I'm really glad that Corviknight set worked. It's kind of kind of a basic Corviknight set, and like I said, if if he had if he had many Pokemon that resisted Brave Bird. Or I hadn't got rid of Incineroar early, or was able to get Rotom in a bad position, Corviknight would have been easy pickings. But uh, the team construction just kind of worked out for it. And Corviknight, looking like he was deserving of the sixth overall pick in this battle. And now we're going to prep and get ready for the Nuzlocke King, who is our game four opponent also has a YouTube channel, which I'm going to link in my next video, and take on the Texas Tauros. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you guys on the next one. This is Nexus Complex, out.